YouTubers. Welcome back to AZ to Ozarks. I feel like I owe you an update on what's going on with the house. The last video I made on the house, we were in the basement and we were tearing out moldy drywall from the kitchenette. And we, at that time, had just received an estimate from a gentleman who was going to do the drywall texture for us. So he was going to be coming back in two days on Monday to start that project. What we had left to do was to hang the sheetrock as well as to scrape the ceilings because all of the ceilings are acoustic popcorn ceiling. And we were going to have to work really hard and fast to make that happen in time for him to show up on Monday. He was squeezing us in between two jobs where he's normally booked out eight weeks. And then we had two days of intense rain. This rain exposed new leaks in the basement. We had more puddles. So we canceled uh, the gentleman coming out and we made the decision to remove the drywall from all of the exterior walls that go around the basement. So we're talking 130 linear feet approximately of walls. We have now opened up. You can see this one behind me here. Under every window, there's at least one crack, and they had tar covering the cracks, which was not an effective seal. Um, it was leaking through the tar, and uh, quite frankly, they hadn't even covered the entire cracks with the tar material. Um, we are using chisels and grinders in order to remove the material from around the cracks. We ordered a high-end, concrete epoxy that is specifically made for contractors to seal these type of basement cracks. Um, we are now at the point where we are ready to begin sealing these cracks and part of this is we've had a lot of rain and we can't use the epoxy when the cracks are wet. So we want to make sure we have a good dry seal and so we're at a point where we think we're the weather says that we're supposed to have two dry days coming up so we should be able to seal the cracks and then when it rains again make sure that they don't leak before we start hanging more drywall and calling the gentleman and seeing if we can get back on his schedule hopefully he can work us in um, and we don't have to wait two months for that we will see um, but that's where we're at um, this has really just turned into a giant project much bigger than we had anticipated and you may say well why did you remove all the drywall instead of just where the cracks were well behind the drywall so the exterior of the drywall where we could see had all been painted and painted quite thickly and it looked okay it looked fine um, but what we realized is when you remove that drywall behind it is mold and there was a lot of mold I'll show you a picture of that real quick And so now that you have seen the back side of the drywall, um, this was a hidden issue. And our kids are supposed to be down here in their bedrooms. Obviously, we've only been using the main floor of the house since we've moved in. Um, but especially because our kids are going to be living in here, we want the air that they breathe to be healthy. And no matter what, we want this done right. And we want a watertight basement. To exasperate the problem, there are no rain gutters on this entire side of the house. And on the other side of the house, the rain gutters were not installed very well. So essentially they leak all along the whole, the whole way of them. And so in these last few days of rain, we've put buckets all under where it leaks and we've managed to save out about 50 gallons of water from going around the basement. And it actually stopped the cracks from leaking by having that water diverted. So this is a multi-stage, multi-phase project where we will be sealing the basement, but we're also going to be doing exterior work where we will be working on the rain gutters, all new rain gutters to effectively keep the water away from the house. And ultimately, we're also going to do some grading in order to slope away from the house as well as putting in some drains and things like that. The drains that are here um, have been crushed and are clogged at this point. So it all needs to be redone, but little baby steps. So let's get busy. 
I have to say that this is one of my favorite architectural finds here. So there was a crack behind this beam here in the basement. It goes all the way from the top to the bottom. And in order to apply more black tar to it, what would you do? Well, it's pretty well rotted out. I guess you just spin it. So instead of it going like this, it's now spun and well, left there. But do you think that sealed the crack? Oh, no, no. It certainly didn't. Uh, but it seems as though we also have some mice infestation in this wall as well. So yet another crack to repair in the good old basement. In order to be able to seal these cracks with the epoxy, we have to clean them. We have to clean out this old black uh, tar material that they were using as a seal. And so the chisel has been quite effective for a lot of it, knocking it out of there. But down here, the crack is really wide and um, they've got quite a thick layer there. It looks like we're gonna have to go back to using the wire wheel to get it off. Um, the downside of the wire wheel is that it throws the concrete dust and that black dust all into the air and makes um, a real mess of things. But we did block off this area here to kind of contain it a little bit. But we're getting closer. Um, this whole wall over here is not going to be addressed at this time because this is the walkout side of the basement. And we have issues on the outside that have to be addressed before we can fix the inside. This is the first crack we are going to start on. This is in the basement bathroom. You can see the crack starts up above the window, runs down the window, and then comes all the way down here and down to the base floor. And this is actually where it was then leaking into the next room, which is the kitchenette. This is the epoxy we will be using. And once we open it, you have three minutes to work it. So it's a pretty quick process. I'll just tell you what we're going to do. You affix one of these little nozzles on the wall, um, starting at four inches, covering the crack. And then every eight inches after that, we will affix one. And so what you do starting from the bottom, which seems kind of counterintuitive, Rick will be inserting the material and then it will show that it starts pouring out of the nozzle above it. That's when you know it's full and you go up to the next one and you continue up. So you work from the base up all the way until the top. And so we'll go ahead and see how that works. Huh? It's been three minutes. Are you going out to the side on that offshoot crap? So now he's smearing the epoxy all on the outside of the crack that will block the outer edge of the crack and once this hardens then he will be able to squeeze the other epoxy in those uh, nipple tubes there and it will fill the back side of the crack up. The external sealant has all dried and hardened. And so now we are ready to put the epoxy in those little inserts 
and Rick will squeeze it in there and it will fill inside the crack. So this will fill up the concrete and prevent it from leaking in the future. We hope. There you can see it flowing into the crack, or into the tube anyway. And it's supposed to pump it and use pressure to squeeze it into that crack. If it has been five minutes and the compound has not come up into the next nipple fitting, then you're supposed to remove it and move the tube up there because that could mean that that portion of the crack was more superficial and it may not be um, connected all the way through. So we moved it up to the second hole now. You can see the air bubbles moving in the line showing that the epoxy is making its way into the crack very slowly. This is all kind of surprising to me, you know, that this stuff's gonna go in there and what is the concrete eight inches thick? Mm -hmm. And it's going to fill the crack all the way. And we're hoping to see it up in this one. And then we'll know that it's full to that point and we can move up to the next. All right, so you can notice on the bottom here, you can start seeing the epoxy is coming out. So it has effectively pumped from down here up the crack into this one. So now we're going to switch it and bring it up to this one so it can keep continuing up the crack. Unlock the line, and then we're good to go. look at the bubbles going up. It should go a lot faster now because the crack gets bigger as it goes up. After the first couple, they started filling up really quickly. And so now we're all the way up here, and I'm not sure if it's going to go to the crack to the right mm -hmm. or above first. Oh, it's in the one above. You pinch it. See if we can push them out. This crack may have just been superficial. There might not be anything. We've moved on to crack number two in the basement. And we'll work our way up this one. Well guys, I am happy to report that all of the cracks have officially been sealed. So each crack takes a substantial amount of time to prepare it. So we first have to chisel out all of the black, that uh, black tar they had used previously. Then we used a wire wheel to clean out the concrete. Then we applied the gray outer epoxy. Um, and then injected it with the epoxy. And of course there's drying time and time for allowing um, like dust to clear out in between. So this has been a long project for us, uh, many days, but it is done and it rained heavily. And I am so happy to report that nothing in the basement got wet no moisture, no leaks. This is huge. This is the first time we've had a rain and we didn't have puddles everywhere. 
So here is crack number one and a little second crack over there. Crack number two. Crack number three and crack number four, crack number five, crack number six, and crack number seven. So these are all of the cracks. Now, the next job is to begin removing all of the popcorn ceiling so that we can reschedule our drywall texture guy. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more of our adventure in the future.